Okay everyone, welcome back to a video on the channel today. Just with a very quick update with regards to update 1.40 that has come out on GT Sport. You can see there we've added five new cars to the game. A new track with three variations, all drivable in reverse. So actually six variations of track. Um, new add-on content for the leagues and the scapes and stuff like that. And obviously circuit experience has been added into the game. So let's go into the full details of what's been included. So as you can see there on screen, we've got the five new cars included along with the tracks that have been added and we're gonna have a look at them tracks in a little bit more detail in a moment after we've gone through this basic information so sport mode um there has been a change with regards to replays we are now now able to load replays from the top 10 stars and compete against them in qualification now i believe this isn't available for times that were set before the update arrived so i think it's only going to be applicable for times set from today onwards so bear that in mind i don't think it'll work for the older times also there's been changes with regards to the gear shifting on certain cars again and there has also been a penalty algorithm change with regards to shortcuts what that means i do not know yet we're going to test that out today and further on over the next few weeks um also it says there uh, there's been um alterations with um the fanatec wheel but the um, there's nothing mentioned about the general penalty system being altered so that's one worry I have. Hopefully they might have altered some stuff in there again anyway because sometimes they don't let us know. So we'll see how that progresses over the next few weeks. But some um, okay changes in there. There's been a few fixes for some bugs in the game. But obviously the weather has not come. I did expect this not to come in this update anyway as we stated in our video. So let's take a little look at the new cars I did. First up the Camaro Z28. Um, we're going to buy it straight away. We've got 20 million, so we can afford to buy all the cars that have been added in today's update. We're going to give them uh, a little test drive around the track just to see what they handle like and to give my initial impressions on them and the models that have been created. So we'll buy that straight away and then we'll go and test this out now. So for this car, we're just going to take it to Autopolis in the shorter version of the track, the, the track that's never been used in daily racing. We've only had the track for, you know, quite a few months now it's still not been used as far as i know for a daily race the shorter version of the track so initial impressions again i'm not the biggest fan of road cars in terms of um, enjoyment out of them they replicate them really well in terms of the visuals the um, cockpit view and stuff like that as usual it's, it looks amazing inside the car but for me i i prefer to drive the race car so again a little bit disappointed for my personal um view of the car the content for cars however they are free so you cannot really complain it's just i mean i would personally prefer some racing cars to be added more racing cars more series different categories of cars in terms of race spec cars rather than just the road cars to be added all the time but i feel like a lot of these cars are being added for um, progression towards the next game that's going to be coming on ps5 so it's very likely that it's, it's just a gradual prog um, progression in game but you can see inside the car looks um, pretty much spot on it looks very well replicated um right down to the finest details as usual and uh, as expected from polyphony so very nice model of the car drives well the sounds are okay i mean i i don't think they're particularly amazing they sound it sounds okay the car it's um one thing i do think that polyphonic get more correct is some of the race car sounds they just sound a lot more um a little bit closer to how they should sound some of the road cars don't really it doesn't the sound doesn't come across in the um, in the game as well i think as some other games can replicate them sound effects i think drive club did some cars good but not all cars i would say that and um, some cars were really well replicated in the sounds however some cars were fairly um not poor but they weren't as good as other games to say but the car is enjoyable to drive i'm sure it'll be fun for some open lobby races or something like that we may do some um open lobby races tonight on the game trying out some of these new cars There's one thing i did notice with the car you can see the um i tried to like a little test out on the suspension you can see the roll on the car you'll see as we do this now we're just trying to test out see what the roll you can see the pitching on the car it has got quite that, that wobbly suspension that you'd expect this car to have so it's replicated quite well and i think some of these um, suspension changes have come with the physics update that we got a little bit ago it definitely seems to be replicating suspension better on the game since then um, so we're gonna have a little look at our next car anyway that was the camaro let's go on to another car now 
So next up is the Clio V6. Now this is not the second generation model. This is the first generation model with, I think it's just under 230 horsepower. The second gen model had 255 and had some revisions to that model. So I was a little bit disappointed when I seen that it wasn't the second gen one because the second gen one was considerably better, I believe, from um, reviews of the car that I used to read when I was younger because this is a car that I really wanted when I was young. Unfortunately, I didn't have the money to buy anything like this. I think I ended up getting a Clio 172, which was the only, as close as I could physically get to the car, obviously, but um, I did enjoy driving that car, I'll have to say. But this one is the Phase 1 model, um, still 230 horsepower, and it should be good fun to drive in game. So let's check this out. Okay, so we're taking this Clio V6 to the Red Bull Ring, the shorter version of the track. We're not going to do the long version. This track um, suits road cars a little bit better, so just to see what it's like. We've got um, sports soft tyres on for this test. I actually changed it from the default just to um, see what it would be like in this, because I believe this would make quite an entertaining car for a, a championship or something like that. Um, I am thinking of doing something in the future. There may be a Renault Sports Championship where we drive um, the Clio V6, the Megane Trophy, and maybe the um, the Clio Cup car, something like that, um, as a little bit of a series that we could run. So I want to do something like that in the future. I don't know when it will happen, but um, this car really enjoyable. I think maybe it would have been better with um, comfort. Uh, sorry sports medium tyres on just to make it a little bit more loose on the rear it had plenty of grip with these um sports soft tyres but enjoyable again inside the carpet look inside the cockpit looks replicated pretty much spot on you can see now one thing that I, I did come across on this was the engine sounds now i do know from this car that i've actually been in one when it's revving and they sound amazing because the engine is in the back back of the seats there you can um, it's behind that little sliding bar so the engine is right behind you and the noise you get from that is incredible but doesn't seem to be replicated too well in this um, in this car on this game so again the sounds I think could have been a little bit beefier a little bit louder in cockpit but um, that's just my opinion and I'm sure they, they obviously did their work on it and got it replicated and that's as good as they could get it for the release so that's how they've um, introduced it but again the car's fun to drive enjoyable and um, again even on the outside the car doesn't sound particularly amazing um now i have heard i've heard these going past because i remember there was about two of there was i think there was about two around where i lived when i was um when i just obviously when i wanted one of these cars and they sounded unbelievable when they went past especially when they were really revving so um you know obviously a v6 engine it did sound quite nice but it doesn't seem to be replicated in the game again quite so well but they look like they, they are fun to drive so i'm glad that the car is fun to drive and um, i'm sure with a lot of liveries on this car you could have quite a good little series in this clear v6 it could be quite entertaining especially around these shorter tracks like the red ball ring the shorter version so again should be interesting i enjoy driving this is probably my um second favorite car that's come in this update um out of all the road cards and um obviously the first favorite will be the one we'll get to after but let's move on to another car um hope you'll enjoy that car uh, i think it's gonna be quite a nice car to drive this clear v6 so next we have up is the toyota tundra trd pro so a pickup truck basically i think they might have added this in to compete against the ford that's already in the game again not a vehicle that i'm particularly excited to drive but we're going to drive it and give it a little test out now so we're going to take this um, vehicle to the short, very short auto uh, Maggior track, um, really short version of this layout. So I'm just going to give it a little test drive. You can see already you're, you're much higher up in this car. Obviously, with it being a pickup truck, you can sense that even from the bumper view, you feel very high up. You can see it feels quite strange, to be honest, um, driving this car um, from so high up from this view. But again, it handles very stable. I would we've got the default tires on it the um sports hard tires and it doesn't really want to lose that rear end which is something that i find um i mean obviously if it's got sports hard tires on it, it might have more grip but i'd imagine in real life these big pickup trucks would be quite um quite easy to throw the rear out i'd, I'd imagine them to be quite um iffy on the back end when you're putting the power down i mean i don't know if that's true but i believe they've got quite a lot of power so i'm sure they might be quite um a handful when doing stuff like as we hit the wall there trying to have a little look at the cockpit not really watching where i'm going but in the cockpit again very well modeled you can see looks absolutely stunning um again well done to polyphony they do a, they do amazing jobs with these cars in terms of the interiors and i believe not all these cars are created by in-house studios now they're actually outsourcing a lot of the work and that's how we're getting a, a constant stream of cars and this is obviously going to add a lot more cars for the next grand turismo when we get the ps5 version which i cannot wait for i really hope we get some information 
once PS5 is um, revealed. Hopefully it'll be with maybe a Gran Turismo trailer as we see there. How high we are up on that bonnet view. Almost a roof view, sorry. Pretty much level with the tree lines on some of the corners. So high up. But again, it could it could provide some fun open lobby racing. Um, some wreckfest racing, etc. It could be um, entertaining. But not for me. Not the type of car that I, I particularly enjoy racing. I'm more into the race cars. But you can see there, I mean, um, it's 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 a, a route that um, I think Forza series went down where they added quite a lot of these type of cars and a lot of them didn't really enjoy that type of thing added to the game. And I kind of agree with them. I, I would rather see race cars. I, I don't want to really be racing cars like this because they're not meant for racing. So um, we'll move on from that and go to the next car in the update. So next up, we have the Toyota Sports 800 um, 1965 model. So another, another very old car. A very, very small car as well with pretty much no horsepower. I think a fridge would have more horsepower than this car, to be honest. And you're going to see um, that in a minute as we're going to take this car around the Browns Hatch in the track for a little test drive. So as you can see here now, you I mean you can just listen. <laughs> it's literally got no power, this car. I can, I can imagine it could be entertaining with a whole field in these cars again, maybe for some racing. Um, again, not something that... I particularly play Gran Turismo for, well, Gran Turismo Sport in particular. The old Gran Turismo games, yeah, it was a lot of old cars and all this, but the, I, I believe Gran Turismo Sport was more aimed at the racing side, the race cars, and they're not really going to be racing this car too much, if I'm brutally honest. Um, I'm hoping that um, no, there won't be any many, many FIA races in cars like this. Um, you can see just how slow it is. It struggles to even get up the hill now at Brown Touch, you can see. It starts to reduce power and you actually have to downshift it to get any acceleration out of it. So uh, it's, I don't know what the actual power rating was. I don't. I can't remember when we had a little look. But just to show you how thin it was there as we go over the curb. The whole car, the car is basically as wide as a curb on um, the top of the hill there at Brown Touch. So it's a very small, thin car. Could provide some entertaining races, but very lacking in power. It doesn't seem to have much suspension travel on the car. You can see very stiff and um, almost... Um, as if there's no suspension roll on the car or oh, you can see as we go through the corners trying to like i was trying to test it out to see and you just couldn't get any it just felt very very planted obviously for a car this old i'm not too sure if that's how the car ha actually handles I, I mean if the car came out handling like this it would have probably been the best handling car ever at the time because it just grips and doesn't roll at all and just stays 100 percent planted to the deck but um Let's have a little look at the final car now and probably my favourite car that has been added on this update and the one car that I was really looking forward to driving. So here it is, the car we've been waiting for for quite a while. This has been used in multiple World Tour events now. So it's the new Red Bull X 2014, um, 2019, sorry, it's 3 million to buy. We're going to get that, no worries. We've got plenty of um, credits there at the top. Pretty much identical to the standard one. Now have a little look at the two. What you'll notice is on the newer version, the handling is much lower on stats now it's got more power less downforce less braking ability and it's a lot trickier to drive and i can tell you it is 100 a lot trickier so we're going to take it out for a test drive around cataluna a track that is quite loose in terms of grip anyway so be very interesting to see how this car handles there okay so we're going to jump straight into a lap at cataluna in normal view I use, I'm not going to alter the views because to be brutally honest, this car has the same views as the 2014 model, it doesn't look much different to be honest. So, the first thing you're going to notice is how tricky this car can be, especially when you get the revs going. It has not got anywhere near the downfalls level that the 2000 model has got. You go into the braking, you have to brake a little bit sooner and you have to be so careful putting the power down. You see it's starting to go, the rear stepping out a bit, we've caught it nicely. Still has plenty of grip going through these corners. You can keep the foot planted to the throttle and um, accelerates out very nicely. But in the braking, you don't quite feel as confident, especially for corners like this. You don't really feel 100% confident at putting the power down. You can see the rear starting to step out there as soon as I put that throttle to 60 to 70%. It wants to lose that traction. So a lot more skill required to drive this car and a very entertaining car though. Um, I'm quite looking forward to maybe doing some races in this in the FIA if it's got um, a track that I enjoy especially if it's something like Cataluna it would be very enjoyable you can really chuck it around you see through that really fast right -hand corner the downfalls still working on the car through there planting the car to the floor but then in the braking zone you have to brake a little bit earlier you can see catching me out a little bit there and then on the power 
having to be hesitant around a little bit wide because we couldn't slow the car down quite as well as the um, 2014 model. And again, through these very tricky corners of Catalonia, the really slow corners, it really wants to break free and just lose that rear end. So it's a really fun car to drive though, and um, I think they've done a good job in lowering the downforce of this car, as you can see. The lap time, um, I mean, obviously not anywhere near as fast as I should be, but way off what the F1 cars do around this track. So it shows you that they have really up, like lowered the downforce of this car quite a lot when you consider how slow this is compared to the F1 cars. So now we're gonna have a little quick look at the new Sardegna track, um, tracks I should say, version A, B and C. This is version A, the longest variation of tracks and a track that really does remind me of the uh, Saint Croix or Saint Croix, whatever you wanna say or call it. Um, it reminds me of them type of tracks, the road layout mixed in with circuit, mixed in with you know, really nice scenery. And it looks amazing this track. It is gonna be a fun track to drive. I don't think this variation will be my favorite. This is my first ever lap, so we're gonna take this ultra cautious, this lap in the Porsche Cayman, just cruising around, trying to get an idea of the track, taking it nice and easy, you see there, just trying to take in the scenery as well, and getting an idea of these corners, and little looking for maybe possible overtaking um, areas on the track. Turn one definitely looks like an opportunity after that long straight, um, it comes off quite a fast corner as well before the um, final straight as well, so. I can imagine slipstreaming will be very strong through there. Some really nice flowing corners through here. This corner really reminds me of a corner at St. Croix as well. Um, it definitely it is, I can't remember which corner it is, but it definitely, um, it, it just brings memories of that track very much so. And then down into this very tight braking zone, you can see again, it wasn't sure how fast you could take this, but it looks like you can actually take quite a bit of um, speed through that corner. Again, very hard to overtake though. It looks like with the barriers on either side, this track could cause um, some problems in terms of getting any overtakes done in some of these medium pace corners however a slipstreaming zone flat out this corner looks like a flat out corner as well no real braking needed for there and then into a heavy braking zone so this corner again looks like a possibility of an overtaking area that will be used in the game and um, quite wide line in entry but then it thins out into this narrow part of the track so again it could be a bit of an sr nightmare with the um, walls on either side and cars getting penalties there that's my first thought about this track um, when I did this lap there, I thought that's an overtaking opportunity with quite an awkward um, situation after it um, in terms of how narrow the track goes. But it looks like an enjoyable track. It's going to be fun, um, but not my favourite version of the track that I believe, well, what I believe will be my favourite version is we run a little bit wide there, trying to look at the scenery rather than looking at the track. You can see this one is my first lap. We're not really push We're not going for any sort of, this is just an installation lap. We're not pushing. We're just trying to take in the scenery and try and get used to um, see what the corners are like as we go through to the final corner, then onto the back straight. So there, you see a very fast corner, and then this is a slip through zone. So it's definitely gonna be overtaking opportunities on this straight going into turn one, 100%. So let's now take a little look at the um, circuit B and see how that is in terms of the layout. Okay, so let's take a little trip around circuit B, which is the um, second choice, the medium track. And this, the layout really reminds me, um, it just kind of reminds me of the, um, I believe it's Blue Moon Bay infield uh, A, the track that I do like in the game. But you see, starting the lap, long straight, as usual, taking the straight from the main track, obviously, as this is the main straight for pretty much all the tracks, I believe. And going into turn one, again, same track, and we're gonna see where the, um, track deviates from the longest version now but this is more of a circuit based track you'll see with the curbs all the red and white curbs none of the it's just it feels more like a racetrack a proper racetrack as we go through into this left this is where it diverts now you stay on the right hand side there when um, we did the longer version and this goes into a very um a kind of a nice corner it's very rare you get corners like this going uphill um, with a slight bank on it so very nice there uh, undulation you can see the elevation changes on this track are quite noticeable and with the gravel around the outside, the sand track around the outside there, I'm sure that could catch people out if they run wide through there. But then going downhill, look at the elevation change on this track. I really like this track, and I think this is definitely going to be my preferred layout for this um, this new track that's been added. And I think this could be quite a nice track that I hope gets used. I hope they don't forget about this track like they did with St. Croix or St. Croix, whatever we call it. Who knows? Um, as we go uphill, look at the elevation change. Really noticeable um, how... and it's, I really like how they've actually got the elevation change in there and it's visible some games it's very hard to capture elevation change but it's so noticeable on this um, track and it's really enjoyable it's great to see uh, i love tracks with a lot of elevation change like this it does make the, the racing quite entertaining i can imagine the replays will look absolutely stunning 
on this track with a full grid of 20 cars going around the track as we then go to the last corner and back down the start straight to finish the lap. So not a particularly long track you can see there. The lap time terrible, we're just taking it easy, just trying to make sure we don't run off and just taking in the track there. But so an enjoyable track, look forward to racing that one on daily race. So let's now move on to race um, track C of this variation. So now this is variation C. We're gonna race this late at night, you can see there. Dust settings, I believe this was late at night. Anyway, as we start that very short version of this track, you see going from the final corner, quite a slow corner going onto the back straight. So again, that corner could be overtaking opportunities, although it does come from quite a winding section, if I remember right. But let's start this lap again using the normal start straight, go down into turn one. Again, turn one is going to be very much the biggest op overtaking opportunity of this variation as well, because I think this track will be quite hard to overtake, especially when you've got cars. Um, that are quite evenly matched um, with normal slipstream on because a lot of fast corners, especially in um, some maybe in some higher form of the car as well, where they'll get a bit of dirtier, it could be quite hard as well for some of the faster corners as we go through this left hand corner. You see, quite it looks like quite a fast paced corner once you've got used to the track, pretty much taking it um, not, not flat out but close to flat out. And then we go down to slight elevation change that I believe was in the circuit B going through this really winding section and then back up the hill now um, so again very high downforce cars will be through really flat out section very hard to get an overtake on there and then into a slow final corner so that is going to be quite hard overtaking opportunity it might be possible to do if you're very close to just throw one up the inside and you might be able to make a move there but a very short version of the track i believe that turn one will be the biggest overtaking opportunity at this track and you can see Quite an, it might be an enjoyable track that to be fair i look forward to seeing if they're going to use these variations so you know it does happen that variations get lost in the game and you don't ever see them in daily races with the weekly change that we're on currently anyway i hope you enjoyed that very quick run through of what's included in the update obviously no weather included but we could i did kind of expect that we mentioned in the video we did it could be three months or it could be longer and um, it depends how far on they are with the development and i believe that is one reason why there was no physics difference between the light rain and heavy rain is because it's just not finished yet so let's give them time let's wait and see what happens over the next few months and i'm sure it'll be once it's ready it'll be better than ever so let's look forward to that i hope you enjoyed the video make sure you give it a thumbs up if you did make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already subscribed and make sure you click that notification button so you don't miss any future videos thanks again for watching everyone